Hey, what's up, everybody? One coach's opinion here, and remember, it's just my opinion, not a fact. So, I post somebody posted the other day that uh, that uh, they posted some eight ounce gloves, and they was like, and they were saying like, that, you know, like basically, basically that you know, some some things you do in the amateur is not to prepare you. For the pros and you got them eight ounce gloves on and, and they're right with that and um it just kind of made me think about because i made a comment on there that said it's pretty much two different sports and uh somebody commented like well how do you figure that and this is how i figured when amateur boxing now i'm talking about head gear head gear amateur boxing it, it allows you liberties that you won't get as a pro Number one, uh, the glove size, of course, if you're 147 and under, it's gonna shrink. You know, and even if you're heavier, you might go from 12 ounces you fought in in the amateurs to 10 ounces in the pros with no head gear. Key is no head gear. So let's talk about the head gear. Um, you gotta make sure that you're not using the head gear improperly. And uh, you might say, well, man, you know, there's only one way to put on head gear. I'm not really talking about how to put it on. I'm talking about the use of head gear because the head gear is actually a tool to develop your defense and develop your boxing skills. Same way with the amateurs. And now, this is why I say it's two different sports. I mean, at one point in time, amateur boxing was really designed for either Olympics or to develop pros and that's where it kind of varied off because you know some of these uh, you know Olympians are becoming good pros even some of the Olympians we have in USA becoming world champions and the guys that they might lose to from other countries <laughs> you're not even hearing them some of them some of them you know some of these guys are doing better than the guys that beat them in the Olympics you know, from other countries. So the ones that won from other countries, those are the ones you might hear about or might not. Not saying that amateur boxing can't help you if you're, if you're, if you're trying to become a pro boxer. I'm not saying that at all. But at one point in time, you have to transition and get rid of some of the things that you can get rid of, that you can uh, get away with in the amateurs that you're not going to get away as a pro. And I say this with the head gear. The head gear enables you a lot of guys, say you have a lot of hard hitting guys, and say, man, look, I can take three or four of your shots compared to the one or two I'm going to give you, which ends up working for some people. Some people, it doesn't work because without that head gear, you might not have the liberty of taking two or three clean shots before you deliver yours. With the head gear, you're used to that. And, and I say that because uh, today when I was watching some sparring in the gym, one of the young men got hit with a good shot right towards the temple, but he came back and countered with maybe like a double body shot in the hook. And I was like, yeah, that was good. You know, that, that, that's good that you came with that, but let's remember, let's try to do the same thing without taking that initial, uh, uh, that initial uh, right hand to your temple, left hand to your temple, the shot that you had to take to get those. So we can get these same shots off that you had without taking this one shot here. Because you might not, that shot right there, you might not be able to take an eight ounce glove from somebody and still deliver what you just delivered. And if you don't kind of explain this, guys will go thinking that I can take four or five shots. I've always been able to take a punch. I can take four or five shots and still deliver the shots I need to deliver. And it's not exact, it doesn't exactly work that way. Some of the biggest punchers, the biggest knock artists, knockout artists in the amateurs, sometimes fail become to become good pros because they didn't have the boxing. The boxing behind them. They just knew how to knock people out. They became good pros, don't let me, but to get to that next level, you have to realize that defense plays a part. It plays a major part. And that's why I say some people use a head gear. Like sometimes I don't like the bar. And I'll tell you why I don't like the bar. 
because sometimes I watch guys spar with the ball, they eat jabs, eat jabs, eat jabs, and thinks it's okay. When you're actually sparring and you bust a guy's nose and say we stop the spawn, that's it, man. You're bleeding too much, man. Yo, you're eating too many jabs. It's, it's, it's no debate. Because the reason you're like your nose is bleeding is because you're eating a lot of jabs. There's no question on the fact that you're eating punching. But when you have the bar, I've, I've had debates and arguments about guys. Oh, no, that wasn't a clean shot. That wouldn't even go. I'm like, Joe, you're saying that because you have a bar on. And it's easy for you to say these things because you have that bar on. But if you take that bar off, your eyes might be tearing up a little bit more. And you might feel the shot that I saw you take. But with that bar on, it's a good chance that you're not gonna respond. You're just gonna brush it off and be like, oh, nah, nah, that was a good shot. Nah, I blocked that or nah, it, it, didn't, it didn't land like you think it landed. Why? Because you have a bar. On. And that bar is gonna mess up your, well, it has a chance. If it's not explained and you don't believe you're taking punches and the bar is actually, um, protecting you and, uh, and taking away your ability to recognize when you're getting hit with certain shots, then the bar is not really helping you out. It's really giving you a falsehood of your defense and you might not be able to recover from this falsehood when you start getting touched with real punches. That's why I, like, I tell people, you know, even if you use a bar, maybe when, say you first start a camp, you got six weeks. Maybe your first two weeks to spawn, you don't use the bar. You know what I'm saying? And then, you know, if you got a nose problem, or not, even if you don't have it, and you want to put the bar on, and you're actually moving and slipping, or if you can wear the bar, and you can respect the fact that when your coach tells you, hey, look, you get hit with too many shots, all right, coach, I'll fix that. And, and don't say it just to please him. Fix the problem. Then that's how you properly use a headgear. A headgear is designed, really, to develop your defense and when you do take those shots, for you to be able to recognize without being having a concussion or having anything to say, oh yeah, you shouldn't be taking these shots. Not, oh that guy, he can't punch or he can't hit, but we're not exactly training you for your spawn partner. We're training you for the guys that are on the level of fighting that you're on. So you're gonna need to, to block these punches. You're not gonna be able to say, oh that guy can't hit or he couldn't do what, what you thought he couldn't do. But that's why I say it could be two different sports altogether because that headgear makes a big difference. And if it didn't make a big difference, I mean, either pros would fight with headgear or everybody would fight without headgear. That headgear does make a difference. Now, like I said, it can't hurt. Now, that don't mean you can't get a concussion because some guys are taking a lot of punishment and they think that the solution is go get a bigger headgear, which provides a bigger target now now you say you you are taking less on your brain because you have cushion now that bigger target now your neck and everything else <laughs> you're taking a, a lot of punishment on that why because you have a big football helmet type headgear that some of those big headgears i'm like this if you can make a dude miss with that headgear on yeah you can do it so everything you might get can be used a certain way if it's used properly that's my whole point. If, if you use a headgear, even a headgear can be used improperly. If you see a guy eat, taking 30 some flesh shots and you don't at least say time, are you okay, man? Or what's going on? If he can't say, yo, look, I'm, I'm trying. It's, he just shot. He just, look, I'm trying. He just shot. It might be up to you to say, okay, look, this is your defense ain't on point, but I'm not gonna wait until to you out unconscious here and I'm watching you take all this abuse, headgear or no headgear. So really a headgear just gives you an opportunity to realize you're taking punches without taking the damage of taking these punches. You know, whether it's video and somebody can show you a video, whether it's you acknowledging it was uh, yourself, that could help. I mean, but if guys are hitting you and you're just shaking it off like, oh, and going right at them without really acknowledging that you got hit. Well, you're not trying to correct the problem. You know, it's like, like we didn't know how to take this the other day, so a kid was spawned the other day. Wasn't a kid about 16 years old, so. He was getting hit with a lot of straight right hands, you know. One coach told the other guy something, the other guy made adjustment, he started getting hit with right hand. 
So when we asked the kid, hey, hey, oh, time, time. He said, man, do you realize how many right hands he hitting you with? He was like, yeah, nine. So in a way we were like, I mean, you're kind of, at least he's acknowledging that he's getting hit with these not uh, the right hands. And that's kind of a way of saying, you know, yeah, coach, I do know, and I don't know how to stop it. Can can you tell me how to stop it? Or I was thinking after five, you would have stopped it and, and let me know how to stop it. I didn't know you was going to let me take nine. But the fact is, he knew he was taking nine. He took nine flesh right hands to his head. So we didn't know how to take it well or not. Well, we can give him credit for acknowledging that, yeah, I know what I'm getting hit with. I just know how to stop it. Or do we give him credit of like, man, you got hit with all the ease and, and you don't know how to stop it. It's, it's, it's certain ways to look at it, look at it, but I'm just kind of happy that he acknowledged that those punches were being lame. We just didn't, as coaches, didn't, or didn't know how to take it. You know, as a coach, you got to figure out, okay, well, we're going to have to teach you how to block those shots because you know what's happening. So you, you just don't care it's happening or you don't have the skills to block those shots. So that's where a coach would come in at that way. But with that head gear, without that head gear, nobody taking no nine straight punches like, like that. You know what I'm saying? Not at a certain level. Like I said, if, you, if you're doing safe spawn, you're working with guys that you know you can work with and, and you feel they're not going to hurt you and stuff like that and you're not too tripping off their punches, I mean, I don't know how that helps you, but um, then it might not be an issue. But when you get to spawn or fighting at a certain level and people are hitting your head gear flesh and you're taking shots that you really shouldn't be taking, that's where the head gear abuse comes in. And you're using that head gear and you're just shaking it off and or you uh, yeah, 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 you can't punch or blah, blah, blah. Yeah, but maybe the guy that you're fighting can. And guess what? You're not gonna correct this problem when you just want to. Because if I looked at a, uh, any fighter and he's getting hit with a certain amount of punches and he was to tell me something like, I could block it if I wanted to. I don't even know if I'd have a comment for that. I just kind of look at him like, so you're choosing not to block these punches. So th that's what I'm saying, man. When you see something going on, head gear provides the coach and the fighter a chance to work on defense, to correct mistakes without taking the damage that he'd be taking without this head gear. You know? So that's how you probably use a head gear. If your fighter's taking too many fights, I don't care what type of head gear, or too many punches. I don't, I, don't, I don't care what type of head gear he has on. You have to correct the problem. Tell him, hey, look, you're taking a lot of punches. And that's, I mean, a, a job, I guess, of the coach and the fighter. I mean, I'd be impressed if a fighter came along and said, look, man, I'm getting hit with, he keep hitting me with this. What can we do? Rather than the, that didn't hurt. Because the that didn't hurt stuff really kind of gets you twisted in the long run. So one coach's opinion, that's why I said, Amateur boxing and pro boxing are two different things. You know, it's almost two different sports. You know, because they sort of are to me. They are, they are to me. And, and, you know, sometimes the stats might prove it. I mean, but like I said, a lot of the Olympians are doing good as a pro. But if you think about it, if they tell you, yeah, I lost to this guy, figure out what those guys are. If you a, 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 a story would be, look at the guy that beat Floyd Mayweather in the and look at how his life turned out compared to Floyd's. And I'm not, and that has nothing to do with the head. I'm just saying, because it's two different kind of sports that you can't get away with. Sometimes you can't hide a lot of stuff in the pros that you can with the amateurs, because guys are allowed to take beats. But off topic, one coach's opinion, tell me what you think. How do you value the head gear? Am I right or am I wrong? Well, not right or wrong. Just give me your opinion on the coaching thing and the head gear. One coach's opinion, I'm out.